so first of all uh, i i would confess that i would not be i'll not be able to present as well as rajesh ji has done because i haven't got the time to present it on a presentation but i'll do the best that i can do uh, the best thing about uh, this will be that whatever i'm going to talk about has already been effectuated in a case that uh, my office filed just uh, 10 days ago so everything that i talk about uh, i'll also show it on the papers uh, though i'll not show everything because the matter is subjudice but what is relevant is the affidavit and it does not harm the court or the case or to us or you so i'll try to present that also i'll keep doing the off and on on presentation but before that before coming to what the certificate looks like how it has been put across to the court in this matter and uh, other things we will first see ki 65b aaya kahan se and what it is about how uh, how we going to use it why are we using it and relevant provisions that one can attract while uh, you know you are uh, putting across uh, an affidavit or certificate under 65b so glad that you you are bringing starting by doing that very very happy to hear that now a learning from your presentation sir learning from our presentation not mine or yours right right correct correct all correct. contribute to effectively yeah. okay so uh, very first thing that we need to know is what is evidence according to the evidence act so evidence goes back to yeah. section rather present kar de because you you can tape uh, show extracts from india kanun or something like that so that everybody can read also sir and actually i'm not i'm not reading from anywhere i'm just just presenting ah uh, okay fair enough fair enough yeah. please so, yeah so first of all we go back to section 3 of the indian evidence act jahan pe evidence ko define kiya gaya hai and document ko bhi define kiya gaya hai so if everyone has evidence act i would uh, like for you to go to section 3 actually and see that evidence jo hai and document jo hai dono uh, bahut hi uh, matlab succinctly bataye gaye hain but the uh, definitions in themselves entail a lot more than uh, we can uh, you know uh, uh, you know make out of it from the very first sight so evidence document first says it means any matter expressed or described upon any substance by means of letters figures marks or by one of those means intended to be used or which may be used for the purpose of recording that matter so first of all what it tells us is that koi bhi substance hoga on that substance we use the letters figures and marks and that will become a document irrespective of whether we intend to put it across to court or not wo baad ki baat hogi but document wo hoga where there is one substance and on that we use letters figures or marks to uh, you know do anything so it might even be a piece of stone on which there is a calligraphy or anything or a, or for that matter uh, in certain cases it might be a a, a log of uh, wood jiske upar scratches hain and that is also produced as evidence so it is not only paper that can be evidence it it's not only uh, uh, you know a piece of paper jiske evidence aata hai so evidence is any substance on which letters figures and marks are used that is why 65b mein alag se they have told ki do not consider only the paper evidence or the substantial evidence to be evidence document document wo bhi ho sakta hai jo aapko screen pe dikh raha hai because this was something new that was introduced in the legal field in 2000 now this was important to know because document going back to document ki definition would mean anything and everything any kind of substance jis pe kuch bhi likha hua hai ya marks hain ya figures hain but that might not always you might not be able to align that idea with what is being produced on a computer computer pe it's not a substance jis pe kuch likha gaya hai ya uh, mark aur figure se banaya gaya but it gets produced when you do certain stuff on computer that also becomes document but because that document cannot be brought to the court like you can bring a piece of paper or a piece of stone you have to bring a 65b certificate to tell that my computer produced this certain document in this certain way and this document is relevant and admissible under the provisions of indian evidence act pertaining to the facts of this case 
that is how document comes in to place there now we come to evidence evidence kehta hai ki it means and includes all the statements which the court permits or requires first of all court ya to aapko permit karti hai ye statement aap lao and you prove something or something that it requires you to bring you bring that to the court and you prove whatever you want to prove to be made before it by witnesses in relation to the matters of fact under inquiry inquiry ki definitions hame 2g crpc mein mil sakti hai there we can find a lot on it all the and this will be oral doc, oral evidence very important to note this will be oral evidence and then we come to all documents including electronic record this has been put in 2000 all the documents including electronic records produced for inspection of the court such documents will be documentary evidence now ab hum aa gaye hain documentary evidence ki segment mein from evidence to document uh, from uh, document to now documentary evidence now everything that we bring to the court has to be proved with certain evidence and that evidence will be supporting our facts that evidence can be oral that can be documentary under oral and documentary the law says ki whenever you are bringing anything to the court and you want to prove it you prove it with direct evidence it should not be hearsay it should not be something that is not um uh, something that can um, inspire confidence of the court aisa kuch nahi hona chahiye jis pe doubt reh jaye that is why when we go to section 59 and 60 to wo hame clearly batate hain ki first of all oral evidence has to be direct here se nahi hona chahiye but that is irrelevant here uske baad it should be direct in the sense whoever heard it should come to the court and tell that yes i heard it and i am telling you the original version it should not be second uh, secondary information whoever saw it should come to the court and tell that i have seen it with my own eyes or with any senses that you have perceived it you come to the court and tell that i have perceived perceived it in this whatever way then we come to uh, uh, most importantly section 62 jo hame primary evidence ke bare mein batata hai primary and secondary evidence primary evidence hamara hoga ki hum kisi bhi cheez ke liye document le aaye the uh, the very document that you are trying to prove or the fact that you are trying to prove wo hi hum le aaye to that will be primary and secondary hoga like the copy of that document now evidence act tells us when can you bring primary evidence and when can you bring secondary evidence secondary evidence kab laaya ja sakta hai wo section 65 batata hai when you have lost the document when it is with somebody else when it's not uh, easy to bring it to the court and uh, the ilk of it so all these conditions also these situations will tell you ki this is how you can bring secondary evidence to the court now 65b is a secondary evidence that is why we have to know ki what is primary evidence what is secondary evidence we have to know that court mein there is only primary evidence that we have to bring which is very popularly known as the uh, the best evidence rule the best evidence rule Uh, uh, is a mishran of uh, many many uh, sections of indian evidence act like aap uh, sabse pehle read karenge section 659 and 60 then you will come to Agar, sorry please stick to english because i think then mr shanmugam will will struggle right yeah uh, i am I'm, i'm keeping that in mind i'm reiterating some things in hindi so that you know it, it just gets relayered okay got it Haan. got it thank you <laughs> yeah i'm taking care of shanmugam ji okay so we come to a uh, collection of uh, uh, provisions yeah right right uh, okay so we come to collection of uh, these provisions for example 59 and 60 then we come to 63 and 64 and then we come to section 90 which will tell us 90 and 91 uh, 91 and 92 where we get to know that everything that we are talking about every document that we are bringing every contract that we are bringing every kind of uh, promise that we are bringing on paper it will be brought to the court in that form only you cannot bring oral evidence and if you are going if you are going to say something about that document or if any other party is going to talk about that document you can or the other party can object right there if you are not bringing the document that you are talking about in the court so you if you are talking about a document you have to bring that document to the court 
this you will get in section 144 of the indian evidence act where you can put out an objection and right there stop the other party that you're not going to talk about the document that you're talking about unless you bring that document to the court along with that we can also delve into sections like section 66 ka notice we can delve into uh, uh, sections like 163 160 163 164 Uh, where you give the notice to other party to bring about documents and the other party refuses the other party can then not bring those documents to prove their facts similarly if they the other party has asked you to bring the uh, documents and you have not brought it uh aage jaake you cannot tell that i will be supporting my case with these documents because you have denied bringing those documents similarly if you admit such documents then the other party can bring it at any time in the court and prove their facts with those documents and you cannot say that these documents should not come to the court so this is all about the provisional uh, provision legislative structure that there is to understand document uh, anything that you want to say sir no no very well done i mean this is very important to understand this right so remember i'll give you an example there was a matter that somebody had called me for because there, there was this old doctor who was being uh, accused of medical negligence okay now it is a 11 year old matter that was being uh, that was posted for cross examination in patiala house now i use 144 and 141 in this instance to say to them that if you are questioning a witness you need to put the document before the witness before starting to question him on that particular document so they lost the right to question that witness and he was absolved of that medical negligence because they failed to do that for that matter in that matter okay and they appealed it to the high court and they did the same mistake in the high court also which is not to produce that document i said if a question has already been answered you cannot reexamine the person either on the same grounds on the same evidence for which the 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 answers have been given but if you are questioning and if you are allowed to do so put that document down and see see this like i told you right procedure is very important to understand anyway because when you go to the court it is a lot of it is dependent on procedure and i i will employ you again if it, it's just not on the basis of facts or the evidence that you have that you are going to win the matter you are going to win the matter because you have a watertight case watertight case means that the facts also play out in your favor the arguments that you put for also play out in your favor the evidence that you are adducing plays out in your favor and most importantly you have followed procedure the court Uh, uh, agrees with the viewpoint that you're putting forth, and is disagreeing with the other viewpoint that is put forth before it. So sorry, this is the only comment that I wanted to make, but wonderfully well put, Raghav. My only recommendation is when you're talking about these sections, right? Put them up on the screen. Easier for you to talk about it with the flow and everybody else to understand and relate to it as well, and that way it becomes easier for anyone who's taking notes as well. okay other other sections that i bring about i i'll try that i google them out but that will then again take time so that's okay take that's your okay. time the idea is to be able to take time and have, and finish this right that is the the entire premise of this particular right sir yeah exercise okay so uh, yeah very importantly put uh, by sir that when you are bringing someone uh, some something in court you have to uh, some some document you have to when you are talking about a document you have to bring the document in the court uh, along with that sir ne witness ki bhi baat kari to uh, let's not let that go there's another section that talks about when you are bringing a doc, bringing a witness the witness cannot be cross examined or taken to be a witness in the court when you have just asked him to bring documents when he is just bringing documents He is just bringing documents. He'll get the documents and go out of the court, and you cannot cross-examine. You can only cross-examine when you bring him as a witness to the court. That is being talked about in one thirty-nine of the Indian Evidence Act. Okay. So, um, moving on. So, will you be taking us to these sections, or should I present my uh, screen? 
you just relay the sections uh, uh, to to me and i i will keep uh, googling it and figuring it out uh, raghav that will save you time you just like, uh, for now for now you can see 139 jesse i'll uh, bring about any other six uh, yeah right right so this talks about cross examination of a person called to produce a document a person summoned to produce a document does not become a witness by the mere fact that he produces it and cannot be cross examined unless and until he is called as a witness so uh, here is where you are calling a person to bring a document it can be under uh, uh, section 91 of the crpc or you can ask him to come and produce document to a party under 66 or the court can also uh, ask the person under 165 it has various powers so uh, now moving on okay now moving on to now coming on to 65b itself first of all uh, let's just try to understand what what section 65b tells us about so different things that 65b tells us about very important to note and very important to know where it comes from so that we can understand why are we come to coming to the court with this affidavit now sir has already produced it on the screen i'll be reading it from my book it says admissibility of electronic records this is the section which gets passage from 65a 65a is nothing but a gateway to 65b it says that anything that we are going to talk about uh, the contents of electronic records they may be proved in accordance with 65b so 65a actually tells us that contents will be uh, proved by uh, uh, document but if it is an electronic record then the procedure is going to be what is given under 65b 65a if i remember correctly talks about secondary evidence which encompasses electronic records correct नहीं सर इट्स सिक्सटी फाइव ए सर सिक्सटी फाइव ए इज द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक रिकॉर्ड मे बी प्रूव इन अकॉर्डेंस विद प्रोविजन सिक्सटीफा सेकेंडरी एविडेंस सिर्फ आपका फोटो कॉपी नहीं होता सेकेंडरी एविडेंस कैन ऑल्सो बी योर ओरल एविडेंस वेन यू आर अ पर्सन हु हैज एक्चुअली सीन एंड रेड दी डॉक्यूमेंट देयर यू विल हैव टू प्रूव दैट यू आर अ पर्सन हु कैन सी यू आर अ पर्सन हु कैन रीड एंड देन ऑल्सो दैट यू हैव परसिव इट डायरेक्टली अंडर सेक्शन सिक्सटी सो दैट इज वेयर यू हैव टू बी वेरी डिलीजेंट वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्सटी थ्री नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग to 65b of the indian evidence act so it is admissibility of electronic records now admissibility and relevancy are two chapters that two parts that indian evidence act is talking about primarily we talk about relevancy from 6 to uh, uh, 32 and then we talk about admissibility from 33 to onwards now here 65b is also part of the gamut of sections which talk they talk about admissibility it says notwithstanding anything contained in this act now we are not withstanding which section we are not withstanding 63 and 65 where it says ki aap secondary evidence kab nahi la sakte and kab la sakte hain here it will tell you that this being a secondary evidence and when you are not even bringing the actual computer to to the court you can actually just bring a piece of paper where you have your certification according to your belief and knowledge and you can produce the document that you want to without producing it so that is why it says it starts from notwithstanding anything contained in this act any information contained in an electronic record which is printed on paper stored recorded or copied in optical or magnetic media produced by a computer second part of it that it can be Uh, any information that has been printed on paper it can be anything that is stored on your computer for example it might be a word document or it might be an audio recording on your phone then it might be uh, something that is recorded i've already covered it and something that is copied in optical or magnetic media produced by a computer that again is the output of the computer on the screen 
it might also be a video that again is a magnetic and optical production then here and after referred to as computer output shall be deemed to be also a document they are making it a deemed document that mean, means it's a legal fiction nothing that is actually existing but you make it to exist because it is important to uh, to be uh, you know come to the notice of the court but you cannot actually bring the computer so that is why you are deeming some that output to be the to be a document and that document can be brought to the court by the way of affidavit if the conditions mentioned in this section are satisfied in relation to the information and the computer in question and shall be admissible in any proceedings here we, here it is important to note that first the conditions that this section is talking about are the conditions in clause 2 and clause 5 of this section there are two sets of conditions that you have to meet when you fulfill them you can bring the uh, affidavit to the court and also it talks about uh, the satisfaction of these conditions in relation to the information and the computer it does not talk about the secondary advice uh, secondary device so if you were working on a phone and then you take a recording from this phone to computer and from that computer you take out a transcription and then there is a printer you have to talk about the information that is facts jo aapki recording hai and there is transcription and then you have to talk about the computer that your computer was not insane it was sanely working that's what you have to talk about you don't have to talk about the printer which was one thing that we discussed very very uh, we discussed in length in the last class ki what do we have to do about the printer so it's not the most important part of it you can also not give the information of the printer but what you have to do is you have to talk about the output of the computer which is being talked about primarily here in the bracket also it says the computer output that is what you have to satisfy the conditions on then and that is what the court will take into notice so now i'm coming to the conditions that you have to fulfill that is clause 2 and clause 5 yahan se i will be a little faster i have been very slow until now now we'll go faster so first condition in clause 2 is that computer was regularly used and the information was regularly stored on it so it should not be a one time job that is being done on the computer with the content that you want to bring to the court it should be a regular exercise so that the the, the court comes to know that it was nothing Uh, that you did in a you know once in a blue moon thing and it can be something that you tampered with so it is something that was being regularly done something that you want to add sir yeah i uh, the the reason why and this is very important what what raghav just mentioned the reason why the printer uh, which is the secondary machine or computing device that is that is uh, being used as an output does not become important or as important is because that printer cannot be something that can tamper with the document creation itself it is the computing device that has the ability to do that which is to mar the 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 manner in which that document uh, uh, you know is is conceived or rather the manner in which it is structured which can and it has the ability to change that whether it is to like for example the same thing in rajesh ji's case which is the two cdrs having different data was something that could have been manipulated because of the ability to give commands on how the cdr is to be printed that is not the fault of the printer but rather the commands that are being given in the computing output that's why this is very very important to understand it is not the issue with the the final output machine but the machine that is giving that command for that secondary machine to uh, be able to take that activity forward right so uh, sorry uh, if i'm being a little long winded and and taking this on but i felt not at all sir not at all super important thing i was going to come on to that um from here i would like you to jump right to sec- uh, the, the clause 5 where now because we were talking about accuracy and the kind of intervention that can take place that is being talked about in clause 5 so this becomes very important it says that the information was in appropriate form first thing 
so that is your interaction with computer not printer then it was supplied directly to the computer without human intervention again your interaction with computer not the printer and then that it was taken out by the means of appropriate equipment that is a printer but it was just used to take out the uh, the print it was nothing that you interacted with it was just something that was following the command of its brain which is the computer so that will uh, you know um, uh, the computer is where the the uh, discussion about accuracy is printer has nothing to do with it so printer you don't have, have to be worried about it and the legislation itself is talking about it and itself telling you that you have to talk about the contents of the documents that comes out when the computer uh, outputs the thing and the secondary device is another thing then in c clause 5c clause 5 sub clause c it again reiterates that a computer output shall be taken to have been produced by computer whether it was produced by directly with or without human intervention by means of appropriate equipment the equipment has to be appropriate human intervention will be immaterial if the both the devices are working properly but yeah there should not be any tampering then we come to 2b 2b talks about uh, the ordinary course of working the the same thing that was being talked about in a also 2a the computer was regularly fed it was in lawful control of the person who's talking about that computer then it comes comes to that the material part of the said period that you are talking about the computer was operating properly sab sahi chal raha tha nothing that went wrong you didn't have to go to the software uh, uh, designer to bring it back to its senses or you did not have to go to uh, get its hardware done or anything like that and also uh, nothing uh which would uh, affect the accuracy of the document or the accuracy of the output was done or had uh, uh, occasion so that you can tell the court that nothing of that sort happened and the computer was working properly so which is where we talk about ki koi virus wagera nahi anti virus and all that uh, sir you can uh, give your input yeah so so this is akin to the argument that in rajiv ji ji's matter where the person was taking the plea of the sim card not being in in his possession therefore alluding to the fact that it could have been tampered with or misused in that instance right so this is a very valuable thing that raghav is pointing out to so so like i said the more you read you can put these in appendices to examples of case laws that you would have read and some facts that you would have read in other matters and that becomes very easy for you to apply the logic behind why the law is saying a certain thing and why it's saying the applicability is within these walls that it's conceived it to be right sir thank you so what comes next is uh, clause 3 clause 3 talks about nothing but but that if you are producing a document with the help of several computers now several computers for example which i'll show you in the presentation the presentation of the documents as well it might be a series of computers it might be a phone recording that you made on your phone and then you transferred it to a computer which is another computer and then with the help of that computer you took it out again in a pen drive then you went to another shop there you uh, Pushed it into another CPU and then you took out the printout. So it's a series of computers that were working together. Does not affect the case or the contents. If it is accurate and two and five have been complied with, then series ho ya single computer ho does not matter. That is only what three is talking about. Now we come to four, which is very important procedurally, which talks about. that in any proceeding where it is desired to give a statement and evidence by virtue of this section a certificate doing any of the following things that is so first of all this is where certificate comes from this this is the clause that tells us that you have to bring in a certificate to tell that whatever document that you are trying to bring with the electronic form or the printout or anything you have to bring a certificate for it 
this is in the form of the affidavit which is again you can you can uh, go to order 19 of uh, cpc where you will find all the procedure about affidavits example you will also find like we talk about uh, chalo we'll come come to that later um so you will bring a certificate in that certificate what you have to tell the court is that you first identify the electronic uh, record and what it is about so for example you are talking about the emails you have to tell that this was an email sent sent by the plaintiff to the defendant it was a reply from defendant to the plaintiff or that you were telling that this was this is the transcription of uh, the audio recording that we had done and this is how we have recorded and this is the exact uh, verbatim of what went uh, between what happened between the plaintiff and the defendant so that is where you identify that what is happening in this particular piece of evidence that we are bringing to the court b you talk about the particulars of the device involved in the production of that electronic record as may be appropriate now here some people might say that yahan pe it is talking about the device that you have used for the production of the evidence where the printer will come into play and you said that printer is not what you have to be talking about we have to uh see that where uh, in four it says a certificate doing any of the following things you have to identify any of these following to just tell the court that there is credibility we are not making a fool of the court we are identifying what's happening we are identifying the device we are identifying the output and then there are these devices that were used in the production of we don't have to be very particular because what i uh, saw in our situation also i had taken the print out from the court first the court's printer which might be the case for many of the people who do not have a printer they don't have an advocate who has an has a printer at, in his office so that might be a situation that cannot be made compulsory for anyone now now as sir had suggested that you go back take out all the print outs from your printer and then put 65b i came back to my home uh, to the to the office i tried this printer lying here on my desk turned out that it was dead and it did not work out and uh, you know confessing myself to be lazy enough to take it to the last day very last day i i did not get my printer fixed and on the last day i saw that printer kaam nahi kar raha then i talked to a few of the people and they said that it's not important for you to be talking about the printing device and it can be the court's device also and because 90% of the people are bringing the uh, documents printed from xyz shops and it's not important for you to take it from uh, the printer in your control it is about the output of the computer that is important and you identify the particulars and everything which when corroborated brings credibility to the table and the court yeah, court doesn't have a doubt about it sir anything that you want to no just that uh, see very good point again that we we discussed last time also and we are also debating it right now which is that look uh, not everybody has a means and ends to all devices that 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 may be required for you to produce evidence for example right whether it is a sound recording capabilities which you may have to go and source from elsewhere in certain instances a deciphering mechanism that you may want to use in order to break evidence and the patterns in in that which you will you will use in certain instances and the simplest of things not all lawyers have access to printers so printer is not the issue the only thing that that, that you have to make a statement was that all the devices that are that that were used to produce that particular document were in working order that's all that you need to make a statement on but the what it hinges upon is that the main computing device okay on which the medium of evidence is stored is something which has not been tampered with and therefore you make that statement to the effect that whether that pen drive or the computing device is was within your control and possession and the additional statement that you make is that if you are alluding to a printer or something of that nature you say that it was in working order and it, it is in regular use regular use makes it very very important which means that it is non malfunctioning at, at any point so those are statements that are standard in a section 65b certificate 
and they carry a lot of weight it may appear to be gener generic language that is being used but it has a connotation to it because if you are able to show that that computer computing device printer is being used on a regular basis because you're either in a legal office or you know you're in a printing agency which is used on a regular basis by multiple sets of people the likelihood of it being tampered is lesser right because it's obviously used by multiple set of people but then it also begs the question that because it's used by many people it could also be tampered but these are all plays that you have to make but these are generic statements again which are standard you know when raghav presents his section 65b certificate you will see as to what are the statements that are made in that and you will be able to relate to the sections that he is taking us through right now thanks raghav <clears throat> thank you sir okay sir, can i interject sir please can i say something yeah yeah please please what is it sir uh, though uh, number of times i have asked this question and uh, very nicely this uh, you know, entire 65 d b has been covered by raghav uh, the thing is sir uh, when we talk of this responsible position responsible official position uh supposedly i am the affected party i want to adduce some evidence somebody has put a defamatory message against me or something or something you know it's in my mobile or computer or mobile. can i take out the printer or do i have to go to person managing the yahoo or some server then i to take out a printer no it can be taken out from your end why would you go to yahoo yahoo is not going to be no, no, the language is little confusing responsible official position What is your responsible official position? You, what is your responsible official position in that particular matter? Okay. You are either a plaintiff or a defendant or a witness. As long as you are responsible for a certain position that you occupy in that particular matter, and that, that particular evidence that is being in, 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 introduced is hinging upon you being responsible for that particular evidence. then that is the position that is afforded to you in this instance and correct me if i'm wrong here uh, any one of you if you feel that it's it's a it's a different uh, implication in this instance rightly rightly put sir <clears throat> i'll come across that point as well so we have read about and one one more issue sir after uh, raghav finish it if you allow me uh, you know Uh, he has very nicely covered it, but uh, when he was talking, about, he started from the beginning to build up the tempo. That uh, section three evidence, uh, what is given? You know. I wanted to chip in with a lot of times. Uh, we go only by the what is given in the there, but that definition is incomplete. And uh, I had a uh, thing which I wanted to read out, contribute to the class if you allow me, sir, because there is certain something very important. Maybe later on, just whenever you feel. Okay, I'm, I'm continuing. In, continuing now. So we have already talked about what two things the certificate has to talk about. So these are any of these things if you are doing, you have to talk about in the certificate. So this is not a not an exhaustive provision. It talks about these things and then anything that uh, clause two would uh, relate to. Clause two relates to everything and anything about that document. so you ha don't have to worry about what uh, there's no straight jacket of uh, straight jacket list of uh, content that you have to put across in a certificate there is anything that relates to clause 2 which is being said by 4c so that is where the crux of it lies now once you have identified all these in your certificates through statements according to your belief and knowledge then you have to also tell the court show the court that it has purport, purported to be signed by a person occupying a responsible official position in relation to the operation of the relevant uh, device so first of all the affidavit has to be signed by the plaintiff defendant or anyone who is presenting it that comes from the provisions that you will find in uh, the uh, order for pleading that is order 6 there you will find order 6 rule 14 where you will find verification in verification you will find the last clause which talks about it being signed by the plaintiff or the defendant or the parties that parties that are bringing it that is where you find that you have to isi wajah se everything that we talk about in a case has to be annexed along with a verification and that verification with an affidavit that comes from order 6 rule 14 and rule 14 sub rule 4 
<clears throat> you want to say something sir yeah so if you note in a written statement or a defense to a written statement you will always find that the reply to the written statements first argument will contain that the person who has verified this particular document or signed the written statement or or that document did not have the authority to do so and therefore that is not admissible and therefore it ought to be dismissed that is a plea taken by 90% of, of lit litigants okay and that is a very smart argument to take primarily because you if you are able to prove that he didn't have authority to do so or, or then that particular evidence can be absolutely vitiated even though that it might be legitimate in many many way, ways okay so that that's this is a very important thing that dragov has mentioned and you should you should keep in mind verification though it is just a bloody small thing that you see procedurally that we leave to you know people who are formatting the document or whatever it is or many a times it who are brilliantly uh, sort of uh, you know uh, able uh, like court clerks and etc who are far more knowledgeable about these things than we are so it's a it's a great way thing to learn from them and they, this i was grateful to all the people who who were grateful enough to take out time to explain formatting and verification and affidavit why everything has to be in the form of an affidavit how documents uh, are, are to be prepared why it's in a certain formatting all of that is very very valuable that's why i'm going to repeat myself again practice whoever wants to practice should mandatorily practice in the trial court or in the lower courts because that is where you will learn the law the higher courts are not going to teach you that the higher courts are only going to teach you the art of court craft because that is where you will hone it better because the quality tends to be a lot better there but if you want to actually understand how the law is applied the only and only place to learn it is in the lower courts and that is where you will get your base in order if you don't have a base in order you will not do well in an appellate court or in the higher courts in most instances you will fall flat on your face right sir <clears throat> okay also because sir has already talked about who can be the person who is in the official position to uh, you know sign a plaint or a ws we should also hark back to uh, provisions like uh, uh, your uh, order 3 order 3 of cpc where you talk about the recognized agents and pleaders who can come across and sign your uh, plaint and ws although you will find this in order 6 uh, rule 14 also where the pleader and the party both of them have to sign but in case the party is not there then the power of attorney can come that power of attorney you can find the provision in order 3 rule 2 you can also find it in specific relief act uh, order 15c where you will find the power of attorney and the provisions relating to it where you can uh, you know get it signed by anyone else so yeah order 3 is your, is on your screen where you see that there are recognized agents who can make appearances who can act on your behalf who can bring in applications who can sign on your behalf all this can be done if there's a power, duly signed document whereby you appoint them as your recognized agent or pleader they can also take your this actually order 3 is about taking service uh, mostly that it talks about is that if you are serving a notice to any party you can serve it to the pleader also and it will be sufficient service of the notice So yeah. that is what it is about. So you want to add something? Nothing. This power of attorney you would have heard in like fifty five hundred movies by way which somebody would have taken a power of attorney and on the basis of which, because he is supposed to be the so called authorized representative, he's been able to do certain acts. So a lot of the games, or you know, and land disputes and a lot of matters, the lot of it hinges on this power of attorney, for that matter, and plays a very very crucial role. So. Thanks, Raghav. This has been excellent, actually. Thank you, sir. Right. Also, while we are talking about it, about it, uh, because I have that thought lingering in my mind, there is one case which is Mankor versus Bhartaj Singh, and that talks about in detail about the power of attorney and uh, and what can a power of attorney do and how much can he do in terms 
of uh, you know uh, being someone who's recognized as an agent and he cannot do everything that is that is a very uh, very important thing to note that power of attorney does not mean ha- he has all the powers he cannot come into the witness box and talk instead of the party itself he cannot come there and talk instead of the party the party has to come there has to get a cross examined and examined so that is what the case talks about now coming back you again share that case with everyone as well so that everyone's aware of these uh, things sure sir and if you made any notes with respect to how you're presenting this it's very beautifully done i would really implore you to capture it in this manner and share it with the you know people it'll be very handy for other courses as well i don't have notes sir but uh, notes bana denge isko ha ah, bana lo because ye bahut kaam aayega ye jo structure hai na it's very beautifully done because you're going into every nuance of it and it can become a little faq in the middle also for someone who wants to delve into evidence per se and the production of evidence this can be a very nice simple presentation that can be made on this and then it's every ha so i would i would take the opportunity to give this credit to all the faculty members on lawyers club india i'm taking like six or seven classes a week and uh, different subjects that we are covering so there's always something that i can link to and that is that i feel has you know given me a lot of precision as to where can i direct myself while i'm talking about one provision so when i'm talking about 65b i can delve into 139 144 60 50 sra and all the case also all because i'm you know interacting with so many people all throughout the week okay i will make notes on this okay so okay coming back to 65b now we were talking about uh, so okay it talks about purporting to be signed by a person occupying responsible official position in relation to the operation of the relevant device first of all the important word, word is purporting to be signed because we are not sure if the person has signed or not the person is purported to have signed that document because affidavit jo hai wo hum ghar pe baith ke bana rahe hain this is being made at our place or residence or leader's house so purporting to have been signed by that person and also purporting that that person has a responsible official position in respect of that device what that means is that the device that we are certifying about that device the person who's the owner of that device or is in the responsible position has to sign and tell that yes i certify that this document was made from uh, taken out from that device and this device were was working regularly and in a sane manner that is what it wants to say so for example if in my office in the matter that i'm going to present i have taken out the print out or i have received the mail on my computer and then taken out the print out i am a person who is in the official responsible position in this office because i take control of things in this office other than me it might be my father who can also sign that certificate because he is also responsibly using these devices and nothing that he would tamper but any client of my father or any client of our office who comes to the office regularly maybe comes every day for the last 7 years he cannot sign because he is not in a responsible official position to actually certify that this device is in a uh, sane working uh, uh, you know it's working sanely so that is what a responsible official position in relation, relation to the operation of the relation of the device or management of the relevant activities is concerned about now comes to, comes the second part it says it shall be evidence it's not may it's going to be shall so the court is going to presume it until and unless you rebut it with evidence this is being explained in section 4 of the evidence act where you will find may presume shall presume and conclusive proof this comes under shall presume where until and unless you have rebutted it with some cogent piece of evidence it will be presumed by the court to be so this is exactly like the presumption that is taken in uh, say for example in section 29 of the poxo act where it says that until and unless the accused person drives off his burden of the shoulders the court will presume that he has committed the offence correct correct posco applies evidence and the threshold of evidence very differently as opposed to other criminal matters wherein you are you are considered to be innocent until proven guilty posco looks at it very very differently where it says that once an accusation has been leveled the onus is on the person 
against whom those accusations have been leveled so remember this will also play a very important thing ha huh? when if you all become in house councils and you deal with different matters for example or even as independent councils when matters come to you they, these are very very look again raghav has alluded to something which was very important the attestation is happening at your end which is attesting to that evidence which is why many of times notarization becomes very important why do you go to a notary public not because of the fact that he is some stamp that you're getting which is what it's been reduced to in this country but in essence what he does is provides an authoritative like uh, authoritative uh, sort of uh, uh, reimposing the fact that you have followed the correct procedure the things were in working order the documents are in 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 were you in your possession have not been tampered with and he is giving his seal of approval of having done that ex- quantitative exercise of or oh, sorry qualitative exercise of examining that those those line of things that you are producing in the form of an affidavit for example or a power of attorney or any document and because he's been empowered to do so which is why the rules of a notary public also clearly state that you have to have practiced for at least 10 years before you can even apply for that exam and get that qualification it is because you need to understand the law and, and the applicability of it and that is why those stipulations exist so this is um and on that note one more thing i am going to uh, state this raghav we have an class on evidence and evidence preservation which is a part of our course i want you to teach that class <laughs> sir i am not sure that i can you know deal with cyber laws wala evidence because uh, no worries we'll work on it together but you will teach that laws class uh, sorry ha uh, so go I, for it ha uh. definitely an opportunity for me all right so okay we were talking about the the presumption <clears throat> so we have talked about it, the it shall be an evidence for the court so there's it it's no question to that document until and unless the other party comes up with some rebuttable you know evidence some rebuking evidence that comes on to the table which tells that no this person is not the person who can certify as to the correctness of this document or that i have seen this person uh, printing it out from some other uh, place and he is telling that he has done it from his office so that that will only come into the picture and be taken up when the other party comes and otherwise ज्यादा ध्यान नहीं दिया जाता दैट इज वाई सिक्सटी फाइव बी पीपल थिंक दैट सिक्स बी वन गोज इन टू द कोर्ट दोर्ट डज नॉट एक्चुअली पे अटेंशन एंड इट एक्चुअली इज द फैक्ट दे डू नॉट पे अटेंशन सिमिलरली वी आर टॉकिंग इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट वेयर देर इज अम्शन एज टू यू नो वेन यू आर टेकिंग जनरल एक्सेप्शन टू बी इन योर फेवर as to any crime that you have been accused of and you are taking that defense it is the accused that has to show that uh, this thing uh, that uh, uh, whatever he is talking about has actually happened whereas prosecution ke upar ye zyada tar onus hota hai so onus and everything that is uh, dealt with in 100 and from 101 to 114 If, along with that while we are talking about shall presume sath is that because we have talked about pox so i cannot stop myself from talking about 114a where you talk about offenses where of the indian evidence act where you talk about offenses related to uh, you know uh, uh, women harassment and sexual uh, uh, offenses where if the lady says that she did not give consent then there will be a presumption as to absence of that that very consent so that is where shall ka jo importance hai comes so shall Uh, be evidence is very important to be noted here it shall be evidence of any matter stated in that certificate and for the purposes of this subsection it shall be sufficient for a matter to be stated to the best of the knowledge and belief of the person stating it the last part of it because we have already dealt with 5 it says for the purposes of this subsection it shall be sufficient for a matter to be stated to the best of the knowledge and belief of the person stating it that means that if you have put it into a certificate you don't have to bring proof again of 
<clears throat> the device or the printer you just have to state therein and it will be an evidence and you just have to state that it is true to the knowledge and belief true to my knowledge and belief that is it you will find relevant provision in order 19 rule 4 of cpc where you will find that uh, the person when he is bringing affidavit he has to do it according to the uh, the the uh, just let me check if it is knowledge or belief because just a second okay seems like suddenly order 19 has slipped off my cpc okay got it so this is not <clears throat> rule 4 this is rule 3 sorry matters to which affidavit shall be confined it says affidavit shall be confined to such facts as the deponent is able of his own knowledge to prove of his own knowledge to prove except on interlocutory application on which the statement of his belief may be admitted so there is one part knowledge there is another part belief knowledge is when you know that something is being done in this sense or that sense whatever you are bringing to the court and then there is belief that your advocate has told you that this is about it and i believe it to be true jaise hum likhte hain para 1 to 10 are true to my knowledge and para 10 to 14 are true to my belief as being conveyed to me by my pleader so that is the difference between knowledge and belief so order 19 rule 3 will tell you that affidavit shall be confined to such facts as the deponent is able to uh, able of his own knowledge to prove mm. except on interlocutory applications where you have to bring belief also because belief uh, you know there is a certain element of uh, um uh, something that you might not know about something maybe it's about law or something and the pleader knows about it but you might not be the best person to say that i certify it to be true what you can certify is the fact that is true to your knowledge hmm. but here uh, in 65b it says it shall be sufficient for a matter to be stated to the best of the knowledge and belief of the person stating it so knowledge and belief you have to tell it there and you don't have to prove it uh, any further so that is what 65b is all about now i'll just uh, come to this and also in the in order 19 you can go to order 19 rule 2 jahan pe cross examinations hoti hain aapki uh, there you can cross exam you can be cross examined as to affidavit also so you don't have to be very sure that if i put 65b no one's going to question me if the party applies to the court that the party wants to cross examine the person as to the affidavit the person can do that because cross examination is a right uh, for almost you know everything we can we can go to 273 of the crpc where we find that the person the accused person should not lose the right to cross examine the person even though he uh, the 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 act says that in sexual offenses he should not come in contact with the uh, the lady that uh, is the victim but still the uh, act says that the right to cross examine in an examine of the accused has to be preserved although he has to be kept at a distance so that is again uh, you know important to note look cross examination uh, uh, just one point in whenever you know posco outraging the modesty of a woman and other sexual related offenses are concerned the threshold changes so remember if you are in a, in the defense it doesn't mean that you are on the back foot because the law enforcement will force you and tell you oh women ka matter hai hame register hi karna padega aur ye karna padega wo karna padega arrest karna padega and all of that but remember the there is there are counter arguments that you can also make to these particular things that are being cited to you which is that look the person needs to be sent for medical examination if they are claiming that there is something unwarranted that has taken place there and only on the proof and that becomes a very important facet as well so remember the all these provisions that are being cited over here become super crucial for you to know because your entire case will hinge upon this and the defense if you're a pro, if you're prosecuting or if you're the complainant for example the defense will be breaking you on the basis of procedure more than what is the evidence that you're producing they will only use the evidence look at the technicalities and then break you on procedure then thereafter 
so that is what happens in a load of cases mostly that's where matters are pretty much make or break uh, and and i'm glad we're going into a lot of segues in this in order to pick up things from different things because you know this is what will come up in a lot of these matters also uh, where you will be able to invoke a lot of things a very simple example that i'll give you is we on multiple occasions when we're chasing criminals who are involved in cyberspace matters i've also roped them in for other crimes because the, the in one instance i found you know a lot of alcohol that was found on the premises and for that that itself is a crime for example you can't keep beyond a certain quantity within the within a certain premises right uh, in certain other instances i found uh, a lot of uh, sexual content which was there in the machine and he had like toys and etc that he had hidden away in a place so uh, and this was in an environment which was predominantly dominated by females in that particular office setting so i used that as evidence to be able to nail him and for his bail to be denied for example so uh, these are things that you can you know if you are aware of it will hold you in very good stead when you are taking up very uh, in like matters which are not very complex but where the law intertwines with multiple things so uh, this is all great reading for all of you and something that you will end up using at some point for sure right also on that matter itself like r- sir very rightly said that defense is going to pick you on procedure which happens in mo- most of the cases because they start right from there because there uh you know the uh, the points of law they are taken first in any proceeding that you go in for that you will also find in cpc that whenever there is any preliminary issue of jurisdiction or limitation that the court can take up it will take it first and then it will delve into the facts and if you are not good with the limitation or with the cause of action or with the jurisdiction your plaint might get rejected that gets rejected under order 7 rule 11 and under that uh you know uh, uh, rule 11 sub rule a will tell you about cause of action then there is agar aapne order 7 9 ki duplicates nahi di you will get rejected agar aapne undervalued stamp lagaya hai undervalued postal lagaya hai that again will get rejected under order 7 rule 11 so many of the times there is procedure that will pick you up rather than the facts or the law and on the similar lines there might be there's a very uh interesting incident that happened once in one of the cases like we were talking about cross examination of affidavits there is cross examination of the serving officer also which is in order 5 rule 19 of cpc there what the law says is if the receipt of the service is not verified by the serving officer then the court shall examine him and if it is verified the court may examine him on the application of the party now in one of the cases in our office what happened was that uh, the service was done but it was not verified by the person because xyz reasons because many things happen here in india and everywhere in the world so he did not verify it and the court missed out on examining him which went folly on the part of the court under order 5 rule 19 as i have mentioned that is where we broke a case which involved you know not a very huge amount but 5 6 lakhs but we broke that case right there on that issue and it troubled those people for very long time and long time long enough to you know get into negotiations with us and then we uh, you know just whipped off that case of the of the desk so that also happens like sir very rightly picked out ki procedure pe dhyan dena bhi kafi zaruri hoga hamare liye so this was all about 65b now we are coming on to what i have to present sir i'll request you to pull down uh, the presentation so i can present mine okay so i can only show very limited content here so anyone who gets disappointed may call me 
and i can tell you about the matter but i cannot be discussing it on a public platform so i'm going to show three certificates three kinds of certificates that were used in this from there we'll then take off so this was the first one this pertains to the bank records that we had put in this uh, particular uh, case so mm -hmm. these were the bank records of the salary that this person had got and we took out the printouts of those uh, documents uh, also mind you you don't have to come up with all the bank statements because it was a period of 6 years that he was getting his salary so you cannot bring in the statements from 6 years because it's going to be this huge a file and then it's a lot of wastage of paper also and we got to be sustainable and uh, otherwise also there are provisions of law that talk about that you don't have to bring in everything for example uh, um for example you can talk about uh, pleadings order 6 rule 9 and rule 12 where you will find that when you are talking about series of letters or you are talking about a contract you uh, order 9 and uh, order 6 rule 9 and 12 actually 9 and 12 6 9 12 sare padh lo so uh, uh, because wo do document production or uh, discovery wo, wo, it covers that entire gamut of affairs if i remember correctly right sir, right 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 so there you'll find that if it is about a series of letters that you're talking about you only have to bring the relevant ones yeah only the relevant extracts not the entire document so usually sorry uh, raghav just interjecting quickly what you produce probably is say the first page which will contain the uh, the the fact that it's come from say for example this book and therefore the the next page will be it is the relevant extract from page number so and so of this book or from this website and then if you go into the sub page of that particular website it's on this this thing and this portion and you highlight things accordingly so uh, sorry yeah i just wanted to mention that and how thank you thank you so much mm -hmm. so order 6th uh, ka rule 9 will tell you about the effect of uh, a document so you only have to put in your plain the effect of that document mm -hmm. you don't have to bring the complete document there because then then is going to be a lot of it and you'll also find it in order 6 rule 1 where it says that you only have to bring in the ws and the plaint with material facts it says material facts it does not talk about all the facts yeah. and it is a rule of evidence that you don't have to bring in law you have to concisely tell about the facts only and evidence is going to be a different story in itself so you are bringing only the effect of the document or you are only bringing the relevant part of the letter or series of letters that you're talking about in addition to that you can also check out section 33 of indian evidence act which talks about uh, only so much and no more there are these words that gyan sir ki agar class aap mein se kisi ne bhi li hai so he was very fond of this section and he used to quote it every now and then and that so much and no more so you bring only so much that is relevant under 33 of the indian evidence act and no more so that is what we have done here also the here are the bank statements of the person and those bank statements we attached along yes sir ha ah, so, sorry sorry because you mentioned 33 it's very important for me to mention this as well when you are pleading remember you cannot plead additional pleadings at a later date once pleadings have been completed okay but hey, it also means that you have to structure your pleadings which capture certain things in a certain manner so that you are able to extend that particular argument and then play your cards accordingly never plead everything either you have to hold something for arguments as well but then you cannot plead anything new okay so if you are pleading something which you haven't disclosed you can't make it a related date so this has to be played very very carefully when you are drafting you have to make subtle statements and leave it at that and then make a play on that particular statement so someone questions you saying that it's new you are going to say no i pleaded that already i have already called out that infraction that i have called out now this is an additional portion to that infraction that has been called out already so sometimes right. you just make blanket statements and leave it at that and don't state everything in your ws or rejoinder or replies so right, go ahead first of all first of all very sorry it's not 33 it's 39 mm. and 
uh, 39 of the Indian Evidence Act, so much and no more. And uh, along with that, like Sir said, ki aapko sari ek nahi de deni. that is also supported by provisions. First yeah. of all, first of all, CPC will tell you that you bring in all the documents and list of witnesses that you want to bring in. List of witnesses you'll find in Order 16 Rule 1. Along with that, when you're talking about the documents that you have to bring in, you'll have to talk about Order 6 Rule 7. And along with that, Order 7 Rule 14 and Order 8 Rule 1A where you will bring about all your evidence that you have to bring on the table right when you are bringing in the plaint. Uske baad, when you go into the examination, when you order 16, you will have to witnesses ki list lagani hogi. You will have to bring in the list of witnesses. Then you will delve in, uh, into uh, the settlement of issues. When the settlement of issues is done, within 15 days from that, you, can, you, you have to bring in the other evidence that you have talked about, uske originals aapko, uh, uh, and after that, you go on to uh, the later of order 7, rule 14 and order 8, rule 1A, where there's a provision that if you, uh, if you are bringing in documents, you have to bring it right then, or you can bring it on a later date also, but only if it pertains to cross-examination or refreshing the memory of the person that has come to the court to give evidence. So that is where you can bring it on a later date. You can reserve it for a time, for a document. Ko, but only if that document is meant to come afterwards on a later date for the, uh, for, for the purpose of cross-examination and refreshing memory. Otherwise, you cannot depart from your proceedings, which is also given under Order 6, Rule 7, where you are not allowed to depart from your uh, pleading. Unless and until you have been given the permission under Order uh, uh, 6 rule 17 of CPC where you will get amendments. So that you can do. Now coming back to the uh, the presentation. So this is how you make a 65B certificate. You first have to be very careful that aapko postal stamps and yay, all that you have to have it on any affidavit or certificate that you are making. There has to be a court fee on it because if it is undervalued or understand then it might again as well get rejected. So that again that I've told order 7 rule 11 may reject. Ho Along with that, jab affidavit ki baat hoti hai, toh we will also go to uh, section 26 of uh, CPC where it talks about the affidavit and the required postal fee and everything that you have to have. That again is another thing. And hai, postal fee and stamp undervalued or understand agar hai, you'll get chance by the court, it will not straight away reject it, but it will give you a chance to go back and bring the complete value of the stamp or postage. And you can do it, you can fulfill the requirement under uh, section 149 of CPC. But you have to be sure ki ye cheez honi chahiye Then pagination is super duper, super duper important. Because uh, very important, the first matter that I actually dealt with, I did not deal with it. I was uh, along with my dad, but I was the one who was given the charge of it because it was not a very huge matter and the client was okay with me going with him. And mm. it was my very first matter. They were all very supportive. I worked on it like anything day and night. And later after everything that gets done, I get to see that my matter gets uh, returned by the court because of the only reason that I had not paginated my annexures. Correct. Correct. I, don't, I would have come up as an objection. That right. You have heard, uh. right. And not from the other party. It was the court itself. The filing department right. did not even ah. move one day from there. And the, the thing got returned just because I had not put the page numbers on. And from totally. that, that time onwards, I was very careful about all that has to be done. So very, super, very important that this paginated. And it actually is something that is written in CPC also. When you go to order six, it will tell you that you have to concisely put your facts and it has to be duly paragraphed, duly numbered. And everything that is alleged and everything, every, uh, every fact that you allege, every denial that you make has to be in a separate paragraph. So it's not something that people tell you to do because they have practiced in the courts. It is actually the law that you have to follow. So pagination is a law. So very important, first of all, is stamp the the, the court fee. Then it's going to be your uh, page number, pagination. And then you uh, 
go ahead marking now, as, as an an extra as well also again a very important thing right Because and it's just admission denial will be will be done on the basis of that only now comes uh, so you'll put the memo first uh, not actually the memo but the name of the parties and everything so you'll have ki kaun si aap court mein hai kya aapka matter number hai kya parties ka naam hai that will be there then you will succinctly tell about the kind of certificate that you are bringing here this is very important because you have to state what is there that you are bringing now that we saw in uh, your uh, 65b ka four that you have to identify the electronic record containing the statement and describing the manner in which it was produced so first you tell ki aapka electronic record hai kya and after that you come on to the statements and everything then mm. you come on to the part where you tell who is plaintiff what he is doing and everything and that he is affirming this on oath it's not a simple document it's an oath correct the difference between oath and affidavit will be that oath is done uh, verbally and affidavit is on paper so affidavit you can make anywhere oath jo hoti hai you can make it uh, before the oath commissioner and then you get the thappa of the oath commissioner and that then gets done then comes the uh, the information of the device so so what device did you use to make that output so it was our lenovo and then what was the model number there was serial number and the software that was being used in that computer so this is what you identify there as uh, the relevant information of the device this is 4a of 65b then we come to uh and 64 uh, sorry 65b ka a 4 ka a and b both of these come here particular of the device so we have covered that then we come to the said computer is under my lawful control and the said record was saved on to my computer for the regular course of business so regular course of business we have seen in 65b ka 2 and that it was under my control 65b ka 2 ka a and also that you were in the lawful control of it which was 65 B K four ka the later part. Then comes that you will undertake to produce the original of the uh, screenshot whenever it is talked about or called out by the court for you to bring in the court. So obviously you will undertake that this is a secondary copy I know, but whenever you ask me to bring the original, I will bring it to the court. And otherwise also you will bring the original to the court because you will file the duplicates when you file the plaint, but. afterwards when your issues are settled and everything you have to bring in the original documents also so that is where this part comes that i will bring the original to the court when i am asked to bring it then you have to certify that the screenshot or snippet that you have taken is original so this is where you are talking about the accuracy that we have uh, you know talked about in 5 uh, 65b ka 5 where we talk about accuracy <clears throat> this production of originals also becomes very important because in a lot of matters you will see that you are you are submitting an application from being exempted to file originals in court as well and uh, this is a this is a very important thing to be uh, like sort of aware of as well right But go ahead uh, ha huh. right and that's important that actually finds its uh, origin in order 13 of cpc where you will find that who can bring original when he can bring original when he brings original how are these uh, if they can be impo- impounded if they can be returned you, it, they can get impounded if the court finds that there is something troubling about them under order 13 rule 8 and yeah. then you can you can also get these things uh, uh, back from the court under the provisions of order 13 Yeah. now you have told about the accuracy which you have talked about in 65 b k 2 ka c where you will talk about the accuracy of the contents you say that i will bring the original then you also talk about the facts and circumstances are sufficient compliance of 65 b that is just a statement because the the section wants you to certify that everything that you are putting on the certificate is true then comes the verification this again is the verification that we have already talked about and then you place your name and you sign and there is your pleader that signs and there is the relevant stamping that you have to done for it to be you know uh, brought into the court i'll show just one another um document which is relevant and after that i think i'll close my presentation okay
is this visible the new document yeah it is it is okay so this again becomes um, so this is an important point that i wanted everyone to note that when you are changing the kind of information that you want to bring into the court and the kind of document that you are bringing into the court to certify that this is what happened the facts that you are going to certify the kind of affidavit will also change because the content will be a little different there so here the mem- the 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 name of the parties and everything is okay later on uh, uh you have to so this is about the emails that uh, were exchanged between the parties so here we put out the relevant details of the email also so we put out the subject of the email then we put out the exact date and time of the email then we put out what an exchange it is then we put out the email description the email ids then the uh, cc's that have been sent the bcc's that have been sent so all these we have to put it out there then we again come to the model and particular of the device as we have seen in 65b4 a and b and then we come to the statements as we have seen in 65b2 and 65b5 so mm. that all these statements come in that you were in lawful control the accuracy and i'll bring it to the court when it is talked about and everything and abc and xyz so that is what 65b is all about in uh, my knowledge and belief and otherwise you know there are ex- experts who can talk better about it thank you so much thank Very you very well presented now uh, both both of you miss mr tandon and you uh, excellent stuff uh can we uh, take a uh, like segue now i mean i, I didn't realize it. we've been at it for two more than two hours um so what we can do is we can stop here today for for now because i i do need to go tend to some other things but let's have another class during the week because so that we can finish this topic on the whole and our assignment right because i do want to talk about a couple of things that we had uh, raghav and i had discussed uh, you know in the in the, the while we were trying to put this jurisdiction piece together and uh, we thought that we need to include a few more things that that has been done uh, so i wanted to share that with you i i know dr verma is uh, itching to present his assignment but i'm really sorry but if you all have time during the week uh can we just do a quick one hour or two hour class uh once more so so that we can just close this topic and move uh, on with with this particular piece right sir sure yeah yeah dr verma aap kuch kehna chahte hain yes um, regarding my uh, uh, you know submission and sharing with the other colleagues i have uh, shared uh, some of these decisions which are relating to section 156 sub clause 3 of crpc correct, correct correct and uh, very important uh, judgment which is there uh, priyanka shrivastava versus state of up from where this particular topic uh, came up all over the country and uh, i felt that it is necessary for all of us to go through this judgment and realize that uh, how people have suffered by this uh, mechanism and how this requirement has come up uh, that's why i have shared with everybody there is an article and there is another uh, point which i will be talking so whenever it is possible i will give my submission but in the meantime all of them everybody can uh, open and go through it that, that is very informative from my so side have you posted it in the chat or who have you shared this with this is our common uh, whatsapp uh, group oh oh you share you got a common whatsapp group also great for everybody we have a group uh, there i have shared all these uh, document and the decided case law is also there two decided case law and this uh, case law priyanka shrivastava is also there and one article on 156 and one another uh, presentation on 156 sub clause 3 is there Fantastic. so let everybody can read this and if uh, if any chance comes i will throw more light on that 
we'll discuss it in the next class uh, dr no, varma no problem sir no problem whenever it is discuss it i know i know we've been putting this off and i'm sorry i've just been a little hard pressed for time But, no 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 uh, it's okay i yeah. know it was a very lovely session ha huh. i know wonderful session really enjoyed it learned a lot from all of you uh, so uh, so in the next class we'll just structure it in this manner right we have dr varma's uh, take on 1563 and he's going to teach us that particular aspect and share his observations on it then we'll have kavita who wants to uh, who would been given an assignment to cover two two case laws as well one international and one domestic mm-hmm. uh, and and then we can quickly run through the few slides that i wanted to discuss with you about jurisdiction and the aspects of jurisdiction with with respect to cyberspace law so those are the few things that we'll cover in the next class um and uh, with that i i will i will take your leave i i i really hope uh, that you know these are proving to be useful because i'm really enjoying the fact that we are having a dialogue as opposed to just one person like constantly droning on or showing slides right this is the only way to learn where otherwise you know no one has knowledge of everything like for example mr varma chipping in about how uh, you know cw tw and all need to be interpreted sometimes immediately it doesn't come into my mind also because i don't do criminal matters for a living right and and i don't go to trial most of my matters don't go to trial uh, or or you know how beautifully uh, mr tandon structured the entire case and focused on the evidence uh, how in a very very structured manner raghav talked about evidence per se not just from the prism of 65 but we went into so many different things this is what you know uh, fuels learning and and i really hope that you all are taking notes also uh, when when we're discussing a lot of these things because if you don't then these small things that we go into segways on and discuss and then come back to what we're talking about will be missed out on because those play a very crucial role remember the law is a, an absolute mishmash of a multiple set of things you don't know when what will arise for you to want to and have to rely on a certain aspect that you may want to adduce in court and there is a manner to do that uh, and and you need to go delve into that in order to figure it out and then of course you also always ought to be aware of case laws that support every proposition that you're putting forth as well in order for you to understand how procedure has been applied how th- things are being adduced why is the court and different courts have interpreted the same thing differently despite the letter of the law being uh, written in a certain manner so look it's all a it's all a mishmash in a game of intertwined manners of of interpretation at the end of the day that is why interpretation is taught as a very different subject in in law school right right and this is why you know the uh, this is why 10000 times i keep in- emphasizing and sounding like a broken radio read the more you read the more you will understand you will learn how language is meant to be used whether complexities are meant to be used whether not because you know it's all a game of interpretation and language at the end, end of the day you don't understand the language you won't understand the applicability everything else is like you know sort of hinging upon these basics or, or of procedure language what is the interpretation what could be the dichotomous point of view that could be taken with respect to that look as lawyers we cannot be like hinging upon trying to understand only one side very important or you understand the other side as well because if you don't understand the other side you will never have a solid watertight case at your end so um, i'm sorry i keep harping on about these things because i always feel that we need to remind ourselves of these basic facts with that i i'll take your leave thank you so very much for your patience as usual and for the wonderful presentations 
by you all i look forward to sort of uh, you know like uh, seeing dr varma's insightful take on 1563 and kavita's take on her presentation um yeah, this is going to be fun whatever the rest that we're going to do because we're going to now start doing assignments and classes you know side by side so this will this will become more interesting that way and we'll all get to learn from one another so uh, have a lovely weekend and take care and Thank see you, you all uh, very soon uh, sir, sir just to point i wanted yeah. to convey to raghav uh, raghav a beautiful present, uh, you know description of 65 which just too good but uh, at your young age you have started that speed of nusra sir to abhi theek hai you have started rattling down that sections so i am not able to catch up with that now i will have to hold the video see acha ye section bola kya hai so please upload it at fastest so i will like to hold it and see okay ye section bola hai cpc ka to ye hai refer karna padega me sir actually i had already taken a lot of time and i was actually going segue on each line of that section to maine kaha ki thoda jaldi hi karu nahi to you know something that was required but i must compliment you you have gotten with that speed wo sir ka jab tak wo char section suna dete hain cpc ke nusar sir jab tak ek section ko refer ko chauthe mein pahunche hote so that <laughs> speed you have already acquired please upload it at the earlier sir and this right. point in case you are interested i don't know i don't want to force upon the class this thing and the reason why i want to see that in your class because when you started and you started section 3 i had gone to my uh, store room and to uh, pick up those two books uh, referral books because uh, section 3 is not very exhaustive the references were there and this thing came up when the, the lawyer of mehul Ch- choksi when there was a controversy in times uh, i think it was times now the media channel they said come up he said evidence ki baat kar rahe evidence hai kahan pe kahan abhi court ke samne nahi aaya lot of time we keep referring ki yes this document is evidence of then i referred to that famous book of butterfly somebody has referred to me then i said okay no yes we are also right that evidence has in such and such form document because the definition per se is not very exhaustive it is given commentary and certain uh, court judgments are also there so that's why i wanted to chip in in case somebody is interested right no, right that way though, i think there is nothing in law that is exhaustive always something no no, no. Is... what you are saying is right but normally uh, because see my uh, thinking was if mehul chitri's lawyer is speaking so he will not pick up any tom dick carry he has to be a, you know high quality lawyer so i think this guy is saying things and lot of time we keep referring ki this is also documentary evidence but it doesn't come on within the definition of section 3 then i referred them certain judgments and it's very handy that's why in commentary judgments all play a supremely crucial role extremely crucial role well, commentary is the point is you know yeah. sometimes somebody can debate the commentary so it's a just a commentary by a, uh, you know author but if if you connect it with a, some judgment high court judgment being persuasive uh, uh, supreme court judgment more of like binding then it adds authenticity to it correct that is it before also before closing out uh, rajesh uh, rajesh ji ne bhi uh, mention kiya nusrat sir and kalashi ji in chat is saying nusrat sir junior i would you know first publicly apologize to nusrat sir <laughs> mujhe profession se bahar mat nikalwao <laughs> no yeah. comparison at all and uh, other yeah, than yeah. that this is not that you are just saying you have attained such a level you know you have started rattling at his speed <laughs> right thank at, you so much your sir. age is commendable thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you everyone i think there's no more questions that are to be addressed we can wrap it up right here okay all right thank you so much arvin sir thank, thank you everyone thank you sir